Do we have Saren? Saren's not here. Okay. Do we have Jim? No. Uh, do we have Cody? Cody's logged in, but not physically present. Okay. <laughs> and then do we have Ian? No. Here's so we Cody. Not... Oh, here's Cody. Hi, Cody. Is he on mute? Maybe he's uh, muted. Uh, oh, there you are. You're unmuted now. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, actually, is it 11.30? Yes, it is. We have a quorum. Oh, here's Saren. So now we have five people. Oh, good. Okay. So, um, Asa, are you empowered to read the statement? Uh, yes, I am. I'm just... Okay. I, I can't hear him. Asa, yeah, can you move your, your mic? Yeah, you're very far from your mic, Asa. Put your you're microphone near your mouth. Sorry, is this better? No, nope, nope, your head. Your not. mic is up on your oh. headset. Oh. You have, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, this there better? you go. <laughs> there. Yeah. Um, Pamela is trying to get in, but... um. She keeps keeps getting booted out. I've been trying to uh, promote her to panelist, but it hasn't been uh, working. Oh, working. okay. Mm. Um, Pamela, I've given you permission to talk at least. Um, all right. Can you all hear me? Yes. 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 All right. Can. Hi. Welcome <laughs> to our meeting. Hi. <laughs> so, um, for some reason, I am not being allowed to join in as a uh, panelist, but hopefully we'll try to rectify that soon. The meeting is being recorded. You do yep. have a quorum. Yep. So um, you um, shall be able to start. This right. is one of the awkward days when I am both um, the DEI director and the CRESS uh, director. And so I have double duty going on. At um, So oh, I'll be with you for the first uh, 30 minutes of this meeting, and then I'll step away briefly to get another group going, and, and then I will rejoin you just so that you'll okay. see, you'll see me step off. And in the meantime, um, Asa, do you have the 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 language for starting yep. the meeting? Okay, then if you'll if you'll go ahead and 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 get that started, and I'll try to work on figuring out why I'm not able to um, to join you as. Um, a panelist. Okay. All right. All right. So, um, pursuant to the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A section 18, this meeting, the disability access advisory committee is being conducted via remote participation. Um, this meeting is going to be recorded and upload, um, uploaded onto the town's YouTube channel. Um, so the time is 11.34 a.m. Um, Chair, may you please call the meeting to order? Okay, I'm calling the meeting of the Disability Access Advisory Committee to order. It's December 12th, 2023. And um, let's see who's here. Um, Sarah and Darren, you're here, correct? Yes. Okay, and Elise Link? Here. Marty Smith? Oh, Marty's muted. She's muted. Sorry, she I'm goes. muted. There yeah, you are. Yeah. Um, and Cody Rooney. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, and Ian. Uh, is he in here? No. No, I don't see Ian. Okay, and Jim Kurnier. Don't see Jim. He's not here either. Okay. Well, maybe he's maybe they're having the same trouble that. Oh, there's Ian. There's Ian. Oh, there's yeah. Ian. Okay. Okay. And so we're only missing Jim. All right. And we have a guest who is Jennifer Mullins. And I don't know if we have any other guests who came with you, Jennifer, do we? Uh, Dave Zomack is here. He's okay. the Eastern Town Manager and the Director of Conservation. And Chris Brestrup is here. She's the Planning Director. Okay. So um, I, let's see. I'm just trying to think ahead. We do have another agenda item, which has to do with something that I believe was brought to us by Jim and he's not here. So 
if he comes, we'll deal with it. Um, so I want to make sure we have time. And um, I guess to the to the um, presenters, I'd like to say that what you did send is a good history document and a bunch of aerial photos and a lot of um, very specific information about how you're going to build this and that. Um, but there really isn't anything that's descriptive at all about the no. site. And so um, I know everybody, uh, did anybody have trouble with the maps? I couldn't read them. Yeah. Okay. It's too small. Uh, say yeah. that again, please. Saren, what did you say? It, it, it's too uh, tiny and I don't know what direction, what they're, what we are trying to find in the maps. Okay, that was my husband's experience as well. Yeah. He tried to figure it out. So the maps do not nope. orient you toward the streets. So it's really hard to tell. And I'm I'm feeling like it's unfortunate that we don't have more descriptive information, um, but it, it's not only me that needs it. So this might take more than one meeting um, because um, we don't, I mean, what I understand about the site is that it's shaped like a saucepan with a handle that goes out toward uh, West Street. And at the bottom of it, the biggest part of it is on West Pomeroy. But I have no idea where anything that you're planning is in that site. I don't know where the solar array is in that site. Um, I don't know if anyone else does. So if it's only me that doesn't, I don't want to waste the time. But if everybody needs that description, it would be really good to know. I certainly Myra? do. You yeah. do? Okay. Dave, this yeah. is Dave Zomek. Um, part of our presentation today is to describe the project to the DAAC and orient folks okay. to, the, to the property because it is a very large property. So we, okay. we, we appreciate you having us today and we understand this maybe one of two conversations we have about it because it is a big property. Um, so we're, we're, we're fully prepared to, to go okay. at uh, whatever pace you all would like. And, and we okay, understand cool. there'll be lots of questions. Okay. Take it away. Great. Well, again, I'm Dave Zomek. I'm, I'm the assistant town manager, but also the director of conservation and development joined here by Jennifer Mullen Mullins, our permit administrator and Chris Prestrup, our um, planning director. I do apologize. Um, I know you have another um, agenda item. I probably have about an hour today. I have some minor surgery uh, this afternoon planned. I would much rather be with you all afternoon, but I, I need to go to that. So um, I'll be here as long as I can. And then uh, Jennifer okay. and Chris are well versed on the project. Best um, of luck. So if, if I could, I may ask Jennifer to show slide three, which was in your packet, and I'd be happy to describe the project overall because I think it is important to 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 understand the context. Um, and maybe Jennifer could even make this a little larger, but that's probably there. We go. Oh, yeah. So, let me let me help and Jennifer has a, a cursor, but let me let me describe the project um in a in a short narrative. So a few Can years I ago um, just sure. one second. Can I ask you to move your cursor more slowly? I'm legally blind, so it, it I can't focus very fast. Mm -hmm. I'm currently yes. not using my cursor, but when I do I will. Okay, thank you. So the Hickory Ridge site is a former golf course. A few years ago, the town took steps to purchase the golf course. It's 150 acres. It's located just north of West Pomeroy Lane in South Amherst, near the new roundabout and the village center where there are a number of stores and shops and restaurants such as Mission Cantina, El Comolito, a convenience store, etc. As I said, this is an old, a former golf course. The town purchased it with multiple goals in mind. Um, one, uh, in short, it was seen as kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity to pick up this much um, uh, acreage in South Amherst. And we decided to do that and create a, a comprehensive plan for the property. We're in the midst of pulling together that comprehensive plan. And one of the 
um, one of the leading goals of the project, and I'll talk about a few other goals in just a moment, was to make sure that we use some of the property to uh, help people who live near it, to help visitors, to help um, uh, neighborhoods to the north and south of the property to connect with nature and connect with this beautiful site. So that's the main focus of our, our discussion today are the trails. However, the town had broader goals in mind. So the property, as I said, is 150 acres. It is bisected by the Fort River, a major tributary of the Connecticut River. And the Fort River is an extremely um, special river. It contains a number of rare and endangered species who call both the river home, but also the banks of the river home. There are endangered turtles, fish, and mussels that make their, their home on this property. So overall, we wanna make sure that we protect that habitat for those species, while at the same time, um, creating opportunities to invite the public to come enjoy and explore uh, Hickory Ridge. Obviously, we are not intending to continue with a golf course. We already own the Cherry Hill Golf Course up in North Amherst, a nine-hole course, but the town's goal does not include uh, golf. So we know to the north of this property off of East Hadley Road are a number of neighborhoods and um, some rather dense neighborhoods. That is the area where Mill Valley Apartments, the Brook, and the Renew Apartments are, as well as neighborhoods to the north of East Hadley Road, um, which include uh, areas near Columbia Drive, et cetera. And to the south of the property is the neighborhood we call Orchard Valley. So in planning for the acquisition of this property, we knew that there were hundreds, thousands of people, a few thousand people who live within walking distance, within a short distance of Hickory Ridge. Another goal of the property um, that that came really with the with the, with the acquisition was solar development. We uh, we are not developing the solar, but we are allowing solar to be developed on the property. So of the 150 acres, 26 acres are solar. And so Jennifer is slowly outlining in green. Um, two areas where there will be solar panels. There's one area to the west, and then there's one right in the central part of the property, um, which will be solar panels. The town will benefit from the solar panels. We will be getting what's called a pilot, a payment in lieu of taxes for those solar panels. Dave, and the help me locate. You're right smack in the middle. That okay. big area right there is where it is. That'll be the other solar array. Thank you. And those have already been permitted and they're under construction now and into 24. Um, we were able to partner with a solar development who is providing the solar benefit, if you will, to the city of Springfield. So those solar panels will help Springfield green its portfolio of energy use. So they are help, we are helping, if you will, a city that does not have much open space, does not have much green energy potential to meet, meet their climate goals. And we will get a pilot payment. So other goals that were articulated through a public process for Hickory Ridge, as I said, include um, trail and trail connections, outdoor exploration, fishing, hiking, biking, uh, running, um, 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 uh, things like community gardens, trails, as I've said. We're also charged with looking at the frontage of this property, which is the only frontage we really have is along West Pomeroy Lane, and Jennifer can uh, slowly move her, her cursor in red along the frontage on Pomeroy Lane. We're also charged with looking at what the town's needs are for other things that may be compatible with Hickory Ridge. And we've done a pretty extensive public process on that and things that have come up for possible reuse of Hickory Ridge on the frontage are things like affordable housing, a potential senior center um, location in the future, a community center a site, an amphitheater, um, and and more recently, the possibility of citing a um, um, fire station, a South Amherst fire station along West Pomeroy Lane. 
The property, although it's 150 acres, most of it is highly constrained by environmental regulation and law. So we really have the 150 acres, when you subtract the solar site, which is 26 acres, you're left with about five and a half acres of developable land right along West Pomeroy Lane, where the former clubhouse and the parking for the golf course all were situated. So that's what's kind of left, and our comprehensive plan is being developed to uh, present to the town council and other boards and committees in the spring of 24. Jennifer is circling the clubhouse building, and then the parking lot to the right um, is a very large flat parking lot. And so, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to create a trail system that complements future development on the site. Um, and maybe I should pause there for a minute before I talk about the trails. Um, why don't I just pause there for a minute and Myra defer to you if there are questions from the committee. I hope I set the stage for the project. This is a multi-year project, multi-year development projects. We don't have all the funding for all the elements, obviously, and there is much more planning to go into uh, what might happen here. Any questions? Mm -hmm. No, I have a question. Where's the river? It goes how far north in, um, you said bisect. Did you mean sort of like right in the middle? Right smack, almost in the middle. It's a it's a meandering, the Fort River is a meandering stream about 20 to 30 feet wide in some places. And Jennifer's cursor is, I think she could probably make that color. You Where can is see it? it is right in the middle. It looks kind of like a serpent, serpentine there. Ah, it is beautiful. Thank great you, at the color contrast. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jennifer. Is it is it north of the solar array that you're going to put in the center there or is it south of it? Uh, the solar arrays are south, excuse me, north of the river. That okay. is the only place where they could fit, Myra, because those were high and dry areas outside of regulated areas for rare species, yep. floodplain, Yeah, I just wanted to, to get, um, so the one of them is on the west and one of them is in the middle and they're both north of the river. Correct. And the, the trail is going to cross the river in several places or in one place or... Is, yes. How is it? So Great it's going question. to meander around. Great questions. Um, so we have, there are seven bridges on the property that were used for golf carts and, and walkers. And, um, and those seven bridges, we are in the, in the process of uh, an analyzing those seven bridges. Some of them will be, will remain and we will improve them so that they can be used both to maintain the solar arrays but also to um, uh, use for the trail system. And I will say that uh, some of the, the other uses I, I forgot to mention, there are so many potential uses here, but I think cross country skiing in the winter, wildlife exploration, <laughs> yoga, and I forgot dog walking. Oh, the ever important dog walking in the town of Amherst. People are already <laughs> walking their dogs there, bird watching, nature study, et cetera. Oh. Um, so, um, so let me can I ask a question? Sure. Um and and I may have missed this, so forgive me if, if you mentioned it already, but um where will the, the entrance to the trailheads be and, and how close are those to uh bus stops? I know there's a bus stop near that small shopping center. Yes, I will. I am going to talk about that right now. It's a great question because it leads into access and another central reason why we purchased the property. So um, so let me, if I could, I will, I will kind of go into the trail system, the first two phases of the trail system. But let me back up for a minute and talk about connectivity and access. And so one of the things we noticed when we were studying whether the town would purchase this property is that there was fairly limited public access. A golf course is used nine, 10 months of the year. Uh, there's high liability, you know, in terms of uh, for the golf course owners. Um, but we looked at this very strategically and, and we said, wow, here's 150 acres, 
relatively flat land that's been used for 60 plus years as a golf course. How can we connect those residents, as I said earlier, living to the north, living to the south, living to the east? West of here is really the town of Hadley. This uh, property really abuts farmland to the west as you're headed kind of behind the malls and think of that area out there. Um, so the, the the population centers are really to the north and to the south with a lesser number of people living to the east. And so how do we creatively and, and uh, in a fiscally responsible way connect people? So what we began to look at is, is a north-south trail connection. And so the phases of, of the trails that we're talking about here, Jennifer, maybe you could pan and get us the north up to the north of the property. Um, the north side of Hickory Ridge, way up near Mill Valley Apartments. If you just yeah, I'm I'm getting there. Pull that down. Oh, there. There's a lot. Um, I have to move the people. So I <laughs> okay. <laughs> so to Ian's question earlier, what we're proposing is a north-south core trail that would begin actually way up on East Hadley Road. And we're working with the apartment owners the, the, um, and managers of the Brook, Mill Valley Apartments and Renew. We've already met with them. Uh, they have, we're in talks with them about connecting those apartment complexes and condominiums to this trail system uh, there's general interest and, and I think supportive interest in that happening. Um, always questions about liability come up. So we're trying to work our way through those. But the goal would be to have a trail that starts up on the multi-purpose sidewalk on East Hadley Road and comes all the way down through the northern portion. Jennifer is outlining here the northern portion of the property skirts the side of the solar panels and then connects out to West Street so that people can get to and from um, the village center at Pomeroy Village Center. Now the pluses here and the connectivity we see and what, what, what excited us about this was that we just redid the sidewalks to create multi-purpose pa uh, multi uh, pathways on East Hadley Road. As many of you know, those connect, again, the, the apartment complexes and the neighborhoods, if you will, north of, of um, north and south of East Hadley Road with uh, Groff Park and the new playground and spray park there. And we are now proposing to do a multi-purpose path from East Hadley Road all the way down and loop it over to West Street, where we just redid the sidewalks um, north of the new Pomeroy Village uh, roundabout. And those sidewalks go all the way up to the entrance to Crocker Farm School. So again, I'm trying to paint this picture of connectivity and accessibility in these sidewalks. So our trail would be six feet wide. It would be a crushed stone, very finely uh, crushed stone or, or trap rock gravel, um, a hard pack, um, accessible trail at 5%. A grade or less. Um, it would have um, informational kiosks. It would have um, seating areas. Um, and obviously the kiosks and signage um, would all uh, talk about um, obviously directional information as well as interpretive information uh, as you're exploring the site. So people would be able to move from the, the north uh, neighborhoods all the way down to the village center exit out onto West Street sidewalks and get all the way down to do anything they'd like by bike um, or other means on this accessible trail. So that is one portion of our trail complex. I have a question. Yes. Um, yes. Some of the material there. you said says six feet wide and then something else said eight feet wide. Um, is uh, these, it will, these will all be six feet wide. That will be our standard. Um, is it wide. impossible to make it wider? From a financial standpoint and a permitting standpoint, yes. This is okay. a 
highly permitted project from the state. So we are in estimated habitat for rare species, floodplain, wetlands, vernal pool setbacks. Um, <laughs> it is uh, probably one of the most complex, it's certainly the, the most complex trail system I've ever permitted in my career. It is it is that many layers of, of permitting. <laughs> so uh, to some degree, the state has determined um, a lot of these factors for us. Just so if anybody knows, does anybody know the width of the Silvio Conti Trail? No. I don't know it. I suspect that is six. I've been on it many times, but I, I doubt it is eight, but I we, we could no, check that. No, it's not eight. I know yeah. it's not eight. And it's actually sort of tough sometimes when there are a lot of people. And there are going to be a lot of people, and it's not going to be directionalized. So I can see a little bit of issues there, but okay, especially from the accessibility perspective. Will there be bicycles that share this space too, as well as walkers? There may be. We're not going to promote it as a bike path. It is not a bike path. Um, and I think from, um, it is not something like the Norwatic Rail Trail, for instance, um, okay. but some users, particularly North-South, may choose to use a bike, but we're not going to be promoting it as a bike path. Hmm. So that okay. is that is phase. There are kind of two phases we're 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 doing at once. One is the north south connection, and then down in the lower left corner of this image is a loop trail that we are developing off the parking lot. So Jennifer may be able to circle the parking area. So the parking area for this facility huh. will exists already. It is the old parking area for um, the Hickory Ridge Golf Course, and we're proposing some improvements to that that I'll go over in a minute. But we're also creating a loop trail that if someone wants to simply enjoy the, the beautiful environment, um, this will be similar, as Myra mentioned, the Conti Trail. I'm glad you did because we will in some ways be mimicking the Conti Trail on this outline that Jennifer is now completing. This mm -hmm. will again be a six foot wide, uh, very um, very level, uh, less than 5% grade loop trail like the Conti Refuge. You'll be going through fields and meadows and some forested areas. And then along the Fort River, there will be two small, uh, very short crossings over wetlands, uh, two bridges, very sh small, short bridges. And then um, a, a slightly elevated, but still meeting code um, boardwalk over a, a wet, sloggy meadow, you might call it a wet meadow wetland. So there'll be an opportunity to get out in nature, to, you know, see birds, see animals, see the Fort River in a safe and accessible loop trail. It'll be about three quarters of a mile long. There will be informational signs, informational kiosks and benches along the way. Um, and so parking for that facility will be at the main parking lot off of um, West Pomeroy Lane. So when you talk about the accessible trail, you're talking about the loop, not the um, thoroughfare kind of one? No, both the north-south oh, and okay. the loop trail will be designed in a in a very similar way, six feet wide, 5% greater or less with the exact same amenities um, that I just talked about. I, I want to mention in a minute on the map, because there's a lot going on here, on the map in a phase <laughs> two, we are proposing to connect the two. We don't have the funding for this. We have the funding for the loop trail and we have the funding for the north-south connection. But in the future, in a phase two, we're proposing to connect the loop trail with the north-south um, uh, mm. uh, throughway or <laughs> interstate. No, I don't want to call it that. Thoroughfare. But, uh, thoroughfare. <laughs> so what's the distance between the two that would need to be created as a connection? Oh, uh, that's a great question, Myron. I came up at a meeting. I want to say it's, I don't have it at the top of my head. We have a scale. Chris, this came up in a meeting. It looks like that scale, it looks like about, I want to say 1,200 feet, 1,200 to 1,400 feet. Chris, am I? Yeah. 
I agree with that. Yep. Yeah. Twelve hundred. So sort of a quarter feet. of a mile. Mm -hmm. yeah, a little more than a gram. A little less than a quarter of a mile. So our okay. goal in the future, we would seek additional grant funding, CPA Community Preservation Act funding, and other funding to connect these two trails. And what's oh. the length of the trail from Pomeroy to East Hadley Road? Do you know that? It's a couple miles, um, right? From Pomeroy, I uh, from well, ultimately from the parking lot at West Pomeroy all the way to East Hadley Road. Um, it may be as long, Chris, help me out there again. Um, are we thinking that's probably, it may be a, a mile? Mm -hmm. Three, mile three or 4,000 feet, three or 4,000 feet, I would say. That's all mm -hmm. it is from Pomeroy to East Hadley, three or 4,000 feet? Five. Wow. Yeah, I, I don't have I, I bet it's a mile and a half. Yeah, I don't have Could that be. off the top okay. of my head. Yeah, yeah. okay. Maybe two miles. I can't see the top. It's, it's far. Yeah. But is, again, okay. our, our goal here is to try to make as much of the property accessible as possible um, to all people, all users, all visitors, um, with a goal of, of having folks be able to explore the, the beauty, the serenity, the, the wildlife, and, and go there with their family and friends and enjoy this, this gorgeous piece of property. You said dogs. Can you? Did, are you planning a dog park on it? We are not planning a dog park. Um, I have helped build one dog park for the town, and I think having one dog park is a <laughs> really good number. Dog <laughs> yeah, I agree. Especially now, since they've shown that it's actually the huge spreaders of disease. We have, anyway. 80, we, we have 80 miles of trails in Amherst that are open to dogs on leash. Um, our goal here would be that this would be a, not very similar to the Conti Refuge, that this would be dogs on leash only. That is our Good. goal. Good. Thank you. Yep. Interesting. So okay, I'll, so I'll pause this... here and, and more questions if you have. Yeah, them. what questions do people have? I have one. Elise does. Um, I know that you probably covered this, but I didn't quite get it. Um, access to near bus stop. Um, oh, thank you. Yes. Um, uh, thank you. I, I, I got carried away, as I sometimes do, excited about this project, and Ian had mentioned that. So the nearest bus stop will actually be up on East Hadley Road um, as the crow flies. There are also new, uh, new and improved bus stops along West Street down near the village center, but there we do not have a way of, there is no bus route that goes down West Pomeroy Lane. So uh, to Ian's earlier question, there are bus stops near the, the new roundabout at the uh, Pomeroy Village Center. And then there are bus stops up on East Hadley Road in front of the Brook and Renew uh, out on the, the frontage there. Um, okay, so if you're coming from, like, let's say the center of town, North Pleasant Street, would there be a bus that can connect to that? To, you know, like, how does one? One, one would need to, um, if, if somebody were coming by bus, they would need to get off at the village center at Pomeroy Lane and oh, then okay. pick up the trail, which would, uh, again, be right off of West Street, and Jennifer, maybe you could circle where that is in pink um, mm. right there. But there is no, you know, we we do not control nor fund a new bus routes for the PVTA. And I, I, I doubt at this point that, you know, we could add a bus just to serve this facility. Um, Bad. In the future, our hope is that we may have funding for a sidewalk to come from the village center down West Pomeroy Lane so that folks could use that sidewalk to access. Um, yeah, that's, that, that kind of location. limits accessibility to a lot of people. If you don't, I mean, I understand that you can't cover PVTA and all that, but it does limit a lot of accessibility to a lot of people if they can't come from town. Well, well, they can come from town. It's just they have to go to that location on West Street. So, but they, 
Yeah. So, so, so uh, once they leave West street, they are, you know, they are out in nature. I mean, they are on the property in, in, you know, in but you have to get to West street. Yeah. There's yeah. a bus that goes down West street. Yeah. There's a bus that goes down West street. Okay. Right. It's not, it's not yeah, terribly yeah. frequent. Once you get yeah. past yeah. East Hadley road, it's not very frequent. The one that's frequent is the one that goes down. I think it's, I don't know what it's called anymore, but it goes down east, um, west, it goes down what's called South Pleasant, and the name oh. changes at East Hadley Road. It turns on East Hadley Road, so you can get okay. off there on that wow. bus. The one that goes all the way to South Amherst is not as frequent, but it would okay. go right okay. past. Is that correct, Dave? Yes. Okay, okay. good to know. Thank you. That clarifies that, yeah. Our goal, as I said, our goal, we're, we we would love to have a sidewalk down West Pomeroy. It is, again, a very wet area, so quite complex yeah. to permit and very costly. I would not be surprised, and Chris could jump in here if she's still with us. Yes, there she is. I would not be surprised if it were three quarters of a million dollars or more to get a sidewalk from the from the roundabout to to the um, to the the parking there. It's expensive because you have to cross a stream there. So there'd have to be a bridge, which is uh, very expensive. Yep. Speaking of water, when you have water, you have uh, even pressure treated wood that doesn't last all that long. So there's going to be high maintenance costs on this to maintain all the bridges to keep vegetation off the trail if it's going to be accessible to do all of that. And I know that isn't part of the project and it can't be because it's operating budget. However, uh, have you talked to people about the commitment that's gonna be required to keep this main, you know, accessible more than two seasons? Yes, no, we've, we've talked. Um, we have our building commissioner, uh, our planning department, as well as our engineering, um, an engineer working on this. We had um, an outside engineer, um, from Dotson and Associates, I believe the plans were in your packet, help us to design this. There's very little pressure treated lumber. This is uh, quite distinct from the Conti. If folks have been to the US Fish and Wildlife yeah. Service yeah. Conti walkway, um, that is, I would say that's 70% pressure treated lumber. Yep. That is not this trail. How um, are you building the bridges? What are they are the going to be? The bridges, the bridges are very short. I mean, the bridges I'm going to say are six feet long, uh, two six oh. foot long bridges, eight foot long bridges, and then a walkway um, over a wetland. But um, this is not an elevated boardwalk like the Conti Refuge. I think that's a really good point, Myra, and and makes us okay. different. It's different. Okay. It, it, we are going to have to maintain the six foot wide crushed stone path. And that will require maintaining particularly the edges to make sure we don't lose it to vegetation. And then yeah. it will require some annual maintenance uh, as rain and snow and the elements uh, can affect the surface of that six foot wide path. And that will require some maintenance. We do have a lot of people who are very eager to help the town with this, including the Kestrel Trust and a number of volunteer groups. And then, of course, we have the conservation staff. So I think I think we have a, a reasonable plan moving forward. But it is there is not much pressure treated lumber in this in this proposal, uh -huh. as with Conti. Cool. OK. Other questions, people? Because I keep um, having them. Yeah, I had one question is. OK. <laughs> I'm, you, I'm glad you clarified about um, access along West Pomeroy Road. And I would assume, I mean, you, I haven't heard anything about the um, parking area because the access from West Pomeroy Road to oh. the site is very steep and won't be compliant. Are you going to regrade it so that it, it is accessible? Um, we could, I, I believe we have a slide of the proposed improvements to the parking area. I also wanted to just um, and I and we'll 
That's a really good question. Um, so we'll go to that slide in just a minute. I think, Jennifer, I, I don't know in the packet if you included any of the images of what the trail would look like um, with people on it. Did you include any of those, Jennifer? I don't recall. That was in the no. packet. Uh, I, you okay. had some sections. Okay. okay. You had some sections through it. Okay, and I noticed Pamela's hand is up as well. So, Pamela, do you... Um, I believe Pamela's hand has been up the entire meeting as um she was trying to get my attention to, oh, okay. to like a, okay. uh, earlier when I was trying to make oh, okay. her into a panelist. <laughs> so okay. why don't why don't we go to the um... and sorry just one one more quick uh, sure. additional question to my question about the buses and 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 Elisa's question as well. Um, mm -hmm. Am I reading the map correctly that it's a, about either? 2,000 feet from the, the green roundabout to the yellow parking lot, and maybe 1,500 that's, feet from the green roundabout to the, the pink circle? That's about right, if that scale is correct on the lower left, yeah. Okay, thanks. So why don't we go to the image of the parking area? Can I ask one more silly fundamental question? Because I think I missed their whole point. Oh, sure. if, if the handicap loop, if the loop, the three quarter mile loop comes off the parking lot and you cannot get to it on a sidewalk, how is it accessible? You can't get to it from the other path and you can't get to it. I don't, I'm missing something here. Yep, let's go. That's a great question and a great segue to the, the image of the, the proposed improvements to the parking. Let me erase um, all this. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer's going to take off some of the other. So, so, so let me make sure I don't lose all, uh, any of those questions. So, let me start with Myra's, which is a fundamental question. So, absolutely. So, we are proposing to make some modest improvements to the parking lot so that um, people. Eh, Every user, all users, um, will be able to park safely um, near the loop trail, and then we will bring the loop trail out to the edge of that parking lot so that anyone um, who uh, with a disability uh, can uh, access their vehicle or whatever vehicle they are coming in, uh, school groups, et cetera, can park in the parking lot. There will be uh, appropriate signage uh, for um, those spaces. And then they will be able to immediately go from the pavement, uh, the paved area, which we are proposing to crack seal and then re reline with all the appropriate um, um, uh, signage, et cetera. And then they, as where Jennifer's cursor is indicating they will be able to go right on to the six foot wide accessible path and then uh, enter the loop trail out in nature. Um, but how do they get to the parking lot? How do they get to it if they don't drive a car? Which I think was Ian and Elise's point yeah. that I sort of missed. This this entrance, like many other, you know, uh, we've been before you uh, recently, we came before you for the Sweet Alice parking lot off of uh, Bay Road and also the Podic Catherine Cole Zala parking lot off of 116, um, where we're doing some trailhead improvements and trail access improvements. Um, but we are not envisioning at this time that people would be able to walk or access the, the frontage of the property in a wheelchair and and get to this point, you would you would need to drive to this point, um, and then yeah. disem disembark from your vehicle and then access the trail. Very similar to again Conti. Um, once you leave the Conti Trail head, um, none of that area is accessible. We can't and that's make the problem with it. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We, it only no, works but, if you're in a car. <laughs> Uh, but but again, we we there is no sidewalk on West Pomeroy Lane. We we actually don't want pedestrians. We don't want bicycles. We don't want anyone really 
accessing the property from that location at this time because we can't we don't have the funding to make West Pomeroy Lane fully accessible at this time. It would be, as I said earlier, perhaps a million dollars to make well, the road accessible. Okay, well. Yeah. So you could get there, Elise, if you got a PVTA van, but you couldn't get there if you needed to take a bus. Okay, well, that's a lot of trouble. Okay, well, have <laughs> fun, guys. Um, I guess this is just a random question. Could the parking lot be set up such that a PVTA stop could be easily added there should PVTA decide to that it's worth their while? I think in the future, that's a great question. I think in the future, as I said before, as we look at the village center growing to the east near the roundabout, and we look at, you know, other, other, you know, uh, future uh, extensions of the PVTA system, we could easily design, you know, a pull off there. We are we are in the midst of looking at that entire area for what else would be there. There may be a fire station there. Or there may be a senior center there. There may be affordable housing there. So all of that is yet to be determined. What's on the south side of West Pomeroy? Is there a sidewalk there? There is no sidewalk on the no. south side of West Pomeroy. Not at all. Okay. No. West Pomeroy is a very narrow road, high speeds. Uh, lots of wetlands, as Chris said, and a stream. Uh, so it's a, it's a very challenging road to make improvements on. <clears throat> hmm. So so this this spot is really more of a destination point, disembark. Um, the, the, the parking lot and the trail will be fully accessible. And then from the north, we are providing access to those folks who live in Renew the Boulders the brook and you will be able to come off the fully accessible sidewalk on uh, East Hadley Road to access the trail to get down to the village center and back. So if you're going for Elise, for Elise's question, if you're going from that drop off point on East Hadley Road and you wanna walk, you wanna go for a walk, um, you can't, access the loop because there's no connection between the two paths. But you can go down an accessible path from East Hadley Road to West Street to the village center. Mm. Correct. Okay, so it'll like, like it'll like curl over. Mm -hmm. It'll like it curves over so it starts north south and it ends up east west. Exactly. One way, might, okay. you know, one way we might think about this is in phases, is that the only way we could fund this and do this is we're trying to provide access to the property in two different locations. I mean, to some degree, what you see on the loop trail, it, it's a different path. It's a different trail, but it's it's similar habitats, if you will. You'll be able to see the river on the loop trail. Well, if you go on the north-south trail, you'll be able to see the river as well. So we're trying to first in phase one, provide access to as many people as we possibly can and mm -hmm. then connect the two. But we don't have the funding initially at the outset to connect the two. So they're two different experiences, if you will. Um, somebody could even, Again, it's it's a it's a decent walk, but we envision this trail. Let's say you live in the village center down near Mission Cantina and, and Pomeroy. You could um if you you we're providing access up to the north, you could then pick up the sidewalk on um East Adley Road and make your way all the way to Groff Park for a morning with family at Groff Park and make it all the way back on on fully accessible trails. So that's kind of, I, I at least in this first phase, I would think about them as two distinct new resources for the town, if Got that it. makes sense to folks. So the first to be built will be the connecting pathway. The second to be built will be the loop. The third to be built would be the connect connector. Uh, I, I might be mixing that up. The north-south trail and the loop trail will be built first. The connector will be in future years. Oh, 
Okay, so the first two will be built at the same time. Yes. Okay. Yes. Our goal and they is are, to our goal it's is to have cool them that they're built. separate and distinct actually, because you can have two totally different experiences. Mm -hmm. our, um, goal, our goal is to have them built by the end of June 2024. Oh my God. So what questions do we need to ask them about accessibility other than the problem with Silvio Conti and the, the really only problem that I've seen, because I've seen people with wheelchairs on it, is that they, that the maintenance is extremely um, important because the vegetation spreads, the water gets on the trail, you know, like things wash out and things, um, you know, and, and gets covered with vegetation. It has to be cleaned a lot. And I assume that that will hold true for all of these paths. Even if there's no boards to rot out, there is flooding. You know, there's stuff that's going to happen when there's a lot of water and ice. Yes. And, and to be perfectly honest, these trail systems may close part of the year when the river floods. Um, we just got three or four inches of rain and... If this trail were built right now, we would have had to close part of it until the water recedes. Okay. Huh. That's just what working, questions, working, working within nature. Working what within questions nature. do we have about the actual accessibility um, of, you know, like with the, not the, this, I get, now we get the big picture. What questions do people have about the small picture accessibility oh, yeah. issues? Any? Um, winter time. Will this be accessible? You know, will you have people plowing the trails, sanding the trails, or will it be closed in the winter time? It, it's a great question. Thank you for that question. Um, the short answer is no, we, we don't have the resources to plow these trails in the winter. So they would close in the winter. Um, even if we could plow them, our concern would be to, you know, that could we make them safe, uh, free of ice, water puddles and snow and i think the short answer is no we we couldn't guarantee that so we wouldn't want to have them open to um uh, in the winter they will be open if people want to to uh snowshoe or or cross country ski they can they can enjoy but we will not be plowing them in the winter they will close at some point that is if we get snow and the way winters are going these days it's anybody's guess. Other questions? Yes. Go I ahead. have one. Oh, just if here, yes. Yeah. If this is Jim Creighton here. Go ahead. Um, and, and this is less a question, I guess, than an observation about uh, overall access uh, to these new trails and and that has to do with i you know i i think the town as a whole town government as a whole should be looking for ways to encourage ways to get folks with disabilities to this area and i Thank don't you. know you know whether honestly i do not know whether the uh, uh council on aging has a van uh, I don't know what kind of steps the town might look into. So this isn't just a, you know, it's not a you know, Department of Conservation issue or something like that. But I do think there should be ways for the town to promote access. I mean, if, if you build something to say, hey, this is open to all, but you're not really encouraging uh, people to get there, then it isn't open to all. And Thank you. I, I, I'm not foreseeing something you know with every hour during the summer there's some sort of van leaving the bank center or something like that but i do think that there should be ways for the town to coordinate better transportation services there 
Maybe I'm nuts, but that's what I think. No, you're not, no, you're nuts. not nuts. It's that's wonderful. That's a great a suggestion. Point. Thank you. Yeah, I'm then so maybe there could be, this. once it's built, maybe there could be a, every Tuesday and Thursday at nine o'clock, you can take the van to the parking lot and there's a pickup at a certain time and it's regularly scheduled so that the town van could do that as a bus route. And like then, then people could actually use it because uh, Ian and Elise's point that they made earlier that I missed is um, is is really well taken. I mean, if they can't do anything about West Pomeroy Lane, then, then you know, I believe them that they can't. Um, but programmatically, the town can do things that will connect, that will make it easier. I have a question actually for Dave. You know how people do things, people who can walk, they will go off the trail if they want to go from one place to another and there's a shorter route to do it, right? Like everybody always makes their own footpath through the, and it becomes a dirt path because when you built the sidewalk, you didn't do what people would do, so they did it themselves, right? And I mean, you can see it everywhere where they put a sidewalk and then you see, oh, look, that's how people go. They go up that dirt path because it takes, because it's shorter. So the question is, is this so much wetland in here that people are not going to go off the trails and make, and you know, walk through the golf course area, or are they going to have to stay on the path? Well, that's a great question. I did just want to acknowledge the earlier comment about uh, transportation, and I think it's a really good one. And I think Pamela and Chris and Jennifer and I can take that back to the respective folks we work with here in town hall and and our other committees and boards. And I think that's a really good suggestion. You know, could we in the future, if uh, this truly becomes the resource that we all want it to become, um, might there be a schedule of transportation to it in, you know, the better months, obviously in the middle of February, I don't know if any of us are going to be out there. We might be, you know, home warm drinking a, a cup of tea, but, um, but, but you, you understand where I'm going. I yeah. do know that the Conti refuge, um, I believe their numbers of visitors. Now there's a lot of repeat visitors there, but I think there are over 30,000 people a year at the Conti um, uh, walkway over in Hadley. So I would expect there to be significant use of this from both residents as well as visitors. Um, so your question, Myra, was more... Um, what are people going to do that isn't oh, on the path? Uh, we call them kind of desire lines, right, yeah. Chris? Um, mm -hmm. So so we'll we'll encourage people to stay on trails i think the conti refuge does a pretty good job of that but yes there are always going to be those folks who are kind of intrepid and and they want to get from point a to point b um we we also call them bootleg trails we don't love them in the conservation planning world whether you're cutting across a, a town common or a or a, a sensitive ecological area we discourage them so we're going to do everything we can we may use split rail fence. Split rail fence is a surprisingly effective, kind of subtle and, you know, aesthetically pleasing way of kind of corralling all of us to go in the direction that planners want us to go. And okay. so we, we're going to use split rail fence in some areas to keep people. There are sensitive turtle nesting areas out here, and we don't want people, we don't want dogs going in those areas. So we're going to use that as kind of a subtle directional hint like stay on the trail and you know we might even put up you know sensitive ecological um uh area signs in some places um so okay we'll do our best um other questions go ahead uh pardon it um just as a time check it's um 12 30 now so i know that okay. there are more uh more topics right. to get to actually thank you very much asa all right so do you um Dave, if you think of things you need from us, I mean, it doesn't sound like we have anything to do, except that we have, um, you know, we've heard the story. Um, and you might come back if you have some questions about what would be more accessible, this or that. Um, no, that that would be one, that would be that would be wonderful. We would very much like to continue to interface with you all. As the project moves forward, I would 
I would, you know, I would welcome a site visit out there as things are coming together, uh, you know, just to, 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 to invite you out there in the spring of 24, we're going to be really on a very tight timeline because these grant sources want this all built by June 1 or June 30. So we are going to be racing to the finish line, but we would love to to have you remain involved with us. And it's an important town project and just one piece of, of many other things that might happen out there. Um, but we, we, we appreciate your input today. And I think Chris and Jennifer and I will kind of take all of these comments, um, many of them just spot on about, about access with Pomeroy Lane transportation. Those are really good comments and feedback. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Um, this is very instructive. So um, if we have questions, we'll know, we'll send them to Pamela. She'll get them to you. Myra, Jennifer has her hand up. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ian. Uh, to follow up on what Dave is saying, I would definitely welcome, um, you know, a, a list of, you know, sort of a wish list of both, um, you know, things that you think based on our presentation could be accomplished within the budget and things that are more, you know, long term along the lines of what um, we were just discussing and, you know, with van access or more sidewalk access or those types of things. And okay. really, you know, anything, it's a, like throw it all in there just so that we mm -hmm. get a sense of what um, what would make a project like this more ideal for people who have accessibility concerns. Okay, thank and you. May I add, this yep. is Chris, Chris Brestrup, um, that the planning board will be reviewing this next Wednesday. So it would be helpful if we had any comments that you wanted to offer to the planning board before next Wednesday. Okay. Which is the, um, what is it, the 20th, The 20th, I guess. 20th yes. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. It could even be a brief memo, Chris, right? With bu bulleted memo or something like that? Oh, that... oh sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll try to come up with that. Okay. And all I right. just I just wanted to thank you all. Um, I think we're all staff from the staff standpoint. We're all really proud that we're 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 we we put this project out there as trying to make as many of the trails at Hickory Ridge as possible accessible to as many people as possible. So that's been a goal from the start of this project. So. And that's not always true in lots of other towns and, you know, some trails we just can't, you know, there, you know, there are challenges of, of topography and roots yeah. and tree roots, but this one, we, we really, we led with accessibility. So I'm really proud of it. And we really want you all to, to be there with us when, when, when we cut a ribbon and, and explore this new habitat together. So thank you all. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Uh, Jim, you brought the in, the uh, Austin visit, bleh, can't say that word, visitability material idea to us. Um, and why don't you tell us what you had in mind? I think we all read it. Um, and it's fascinating to me. So um, uh, take it away. Is Jim there? Jim, you're muted. Yeah, I just I just unmuted. I, my phone wasn't behaving as it never okay. does. Been. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I probably oversold it a bit when we first discussed this maybe two or three months ago uh, because I repeated what people had said to me as opposed to looking at the materials. I think that there are I know that there are more restrictions in Massachusetts in terms of what uh, ordinances can do as far as private homes are concerned, or even developments to some extent. And Texas is notorious in a lot of good ways because it means housing is cheaper. Um, and we also see that uh, you know if, if you Google some around housing and, and Austin, uh, one of the things that developers will say, well, the, the reason that housing is more expensive in Austin than in other places is that uh, you have this stupid visitability ordinance. So it's more expensive because well, they can get away with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Um, so I, I think that 
But on the other hand, you know, I, I think that in this community, uh, this is it, uh, obviously, we have folks in wheelchairs, folks with mobility impairments uh, who could definitely better, you know, they, a lot of times they simply can't visit their neighbors. Now, you know, with existing housing, forget it. That's not going to happen unless the, the person wants to, you know, do some renovations. But the idea that the threshold of the home should be even um, with the, the sidewalk, uh, the idea that doors, uh, doorways in the home should be, you know, at least 30 inches wide. These are good improvements and they make um, all homes accessible, uh, not only to visitors, but the idea that, you know, you're looking around, you're looking at downsides or something like that as, as you get older. And, and we all know, well, not some of you don't know, but anyway, some of us do, <laughs> that uh, things don't get more fun as you get older, they get a little more challenging. And so, you know, you're looking around for a home and you don't want to do $20,000 worth of improvements, but you find something that's visitable and you can work with that. So I think from my perspective, it's definitely worth exploring in terms of what is possible in Massachusetts and what's possible in Amherst. Uh, maybe we can't uh, say you have to do this. Maybe we have to look at trying to create incentives. Uh, maybe building permits don't cost as much as something like that if uh, you abide by visitability guidelines, those kinds of things. But uh, so I, I really wanted the group to take a look at this and, and, and start to think about it. Um, I have a question to you. Uh, the thing that you sent said that there were uh, pilot projects like in Oklahoma and Utah and Georgia and, you know, places like that. And they're all low regulation states. Um, do you do you know of any in more high regulation states? Do you know any place that we could use as a model? That would be I in a do place not. That... I mean, I, I think I can do more research and check that out. Uh, but, at, you know, off the top of my head and from what I've seen, I do not. And nor do I and nor have I seen anything really in Massachusetts. I heard people say, oh, well, it's in Massachusetts, but it's not. Um, so I I can I can do more research on that. And I apologize for not covering that base before we this. No, that would be cool. Well, one of the other reasons that they're doing that is they have so much they have so much new construction and we don't. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, they I mean, Austin is a boom town um, until it isn't, but it, it's a boom town. And and, um, you know, the the uh, Atlanta or Atlanta area is booming, you know, and they're building, building, building. And so it's really easy to do that. And because yeah. there's so much call for new stuff, there just isn't that much building here. Um but it's absolutely I, right. I would, you know, it, it's a great idea. I mean, if, it makes a hundred percent sense. Why didn't anybody ever think about that? Because you can't go visit. My mother can't come visit my house because she can't get up the two steps that you have to get in. You know, get to my house, and my my place is so small that the bathroom door is twenty four inches wide, and there's no way to make it wider. And the, you know, it's not like we built it. So. Yeah. Um, you know, if we were building it, we would we would do it differently. So just having regulations, in what way, Marty, in what way that he's what he's looking for, how does that differ from what you would what you'd be required to build in a house? Okay, there's a couple of things. There's a, there's several things about the proposed um visitability thing that, that sort of struck me. That it works in Austin, it probably won't work in Massachusetts, especially in Amherst, um, because there aren't very many flat sites. Um, I having the concept of having a a low threshold is frankly a real issue in Mass in in our weather. It works fine in Austin, but it, it doesn't won't snuff. work here yeah. because yeah. we need to have the threshold above the the paving in order to not flood our house. It, it is a real snuff. issue. I have I actually have a property in Vermont, and we built an addition, and I made the 
threshold flush and actually created a problem. So that is an issue um, that we need, that we'll have to deal with. The other thing is we just don't have a lot of flat sites. There aren't too many sites today that are available unless they're on, um, you know, the farmland that are, that actually don't have um, a height differential on the site that would make it very difficult to make it accessible. Um, but, you know, that said, it's a nice thing to have. The other thing that bothered me about the, the presentation was that on a, that the code that they had allowed you to get into the house. And these are all single family houses that allowed you to get into the house. But once you got in, you couldn't go anywhere. In fact, the plans right. they showed, yeah, maybe, maybe the door to the bathroom was big enough, but if you're in a chair, there's no way you're going to get in there and use the That's toilet. Right. So that, That's what I was wondering. that defeats the purpose. <laughs> 30 inches is not big enough for a chair, correct? Um, I like big. 36. You can do it in 30. Yeah. You can do it in 30. I prefer 36. Yeah. Now, the state of Massachusetts requires all front 36. doors to be 36 inches right. wide. Right. So there's, I'll, you know, my husband's in a chair right now. And and we put a short ramp up to the to the front door. And then luckily our house is all one floor. And I can get him with that. If he doesn't have his foot rests in, I can get him around into the bathroom, which has a 30 inch door. But we have purposely done a lot of work on our house to make it accessible as we age. So that's a whole different thing. But in the state of Massachusetts, any housing that's four or more units is required to have um, accessible entrances. Um, I have experience uh, living yeah. in, uh, <laughs> in another country, in Turkey, and uh, there the, uh, the designs are so that all the doors inside the house are the same width. Mm -hmm. And the, whether it is the bathroom or the living room or one of the bedrooms and all corridors are wide. It's not like here. So when we came here um, and we were looking for a place where we could buy and renovate, uh, we could not find anything suitable. The corridors were so not, uh, narrow. And if you put a wide bathroom door, it, you, there wasn't enough uh, dimension for you to curve in to get into the bathroom. Yeah. So that really has nothing to do with the uh, weather conditions outside, whether it's New England or South. It's just an understanding that the designs should be made so that it is at least inside the building it's easily accessible. Like in your case with your mother, uh, Myra, you know, yeah. if the doors are wide, they, once she's inside, so you'll just try to find an accessible entrance, you know, like build yeah. a uh, portable ramp or do something, you know, but yeah. inside it, it is not comfortable. She can't move around. So I know I face the same situation, but I didn't face it once I'm inside the building in Turkey, we didn't really have any problems at all. So it is just the concept that the builders, the architects should have. I wonder what it is in Europe, in other countries, like what it is in Germany. I think I'll try to see if I can find anything. European buildings are pretty tight. Yep. Huh? European buildings Not are pretty tight. Part, of, Not a lot of, part space. of the issue is that you're talking about, Saren, is, is the cost of construction. Um, it's, well, I mean, it's a, uh, larger, it's a much greater cost. I mean, Turkey is 
I assume that the buildings that you were in were largely um, masonry and, yeah. and were not wood frame. Yeah, wooden field yes. steel frame is very different. You also, in Turkey, you don't get a lot of air conditioning. They use the building as a, a breathing. It's it's a whole different concept because of the the climate in Turkey. Right, but why does it have anything to do with the width of the bathroom doors? It's not just the bathroom doors. It's just the when you go into those structures in in those climates, you find it in Greece, you find it in um, other uh, areas in that kind of a climate where they have larger, um, everything's a little bit larger than we have here in the States. And it's largely because of, they use it as a climate, um, keeping the house cool. You know, it's like the Nubian structures that have the dome on them. Well, that dome is really important to keeping your house cool in the summer. So it has a lot to do with, with the environment. Here in New England, where it's really cold, we build much smaller because you don't want to heat as much space. And that's where the, you know, you look at old New England homes and they have 24 inch doors. They have 30 inch corridors. It's, if you live in an old house, it's miserable to try and put a queen size bed into a bedroom. Yep. You, you know, <laughs> just getting it up the stairs. You know, you look at the old house, their stairs are really steep and shallow. And, and the, they turn. Yeah. And they turn. And that's because they, <laughs> the, old builders squeezed every single inch out of the building because they didn't want to heat it. You know, when you think about trying to heat a house with a wood fire, you're going to make it as small as possible. And that's the difference. Um, yeah, I wish we all could live but in nice, Marty, big, spacious places. <laughs> right, but Marty, times have changed. They have more. They have changed, but it's still, everything. it's so, still an issue of of heating and cooling, it's uh, the cost of that and the cost of building it itself. That's, that's, and I'm not justifying it. I'm just saying that's where the decisions are. Yeah, maybe we can do some advocacy and try to make a change. Yeah. So Jim it's said gonna he- It's going to be only on the person who is building the property. Yeah, we're probably not going to get an ordinance, but it would be, I think the place Jim said to start is a good idea. If we can find anybody in a high regulation, uh, northern colder state that has created this kind of incentive or anything that thinks about the visitability of homes, um, that would be great because if there was a model out there, um, then we could jump off the model and do you know make some do some advocacy. But you know if there um, there are a lot of reasons proposed by Jim and Marty that might make this very difficult. So Jim, are you in a, do you have a network of people that you might be able to contact about this? Oh, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. cool. Cool, all right. If, so if, bring if that. assuming they're still talking to me, it, it should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> My Cody okay. has signed up. Okay, Cody. Um, yeah. I was... <laughs> It's a, um, as we just seen, you know, there are people out there who think they are being accessible friendly, but they really <laughs> Not, they don't think about it was it's unless get this done and today even in English we see poorly made the quote of Quote, accessible, friendly 
buildings. Oh, you know, even with this idea, you know, it's all down that we serve as a advisory because the contract is our work for ways to just get the job done. And I don't feel they really care or, or want to go back to the drawer board and say, well, this needs to be changed. Well, that needs to be changed. They don't want to do that. Oh, yeah. Okay, there was a lot of crackling on his feed. So, at least for me, I didn't catch a lot of it because there was a lot of crackling. Um, does Did anybody hear it better than I did? Um, I think I got the end. Um, I got the end. Yeah. Um, it just, was it about um, how you were disappointed with the um, Hickory Ridge project not coming to us earlier about planning and, like, not going back to the planning, to the drawing board about that, or, um... Um, no. I'm just saying in general. general. Okay. I think when we talk about accessibility friendly places that I know we see a lot of already developed points in a country, especially us at a point where it's different. Okay. All right. Thank <clears throat> thank you. Um we have oh yeah. Um Pat isn't here, correct? Pat DeAngelis? Correct. Okay, so we don't have any uh information about becoming a commission. Um the other thing that is at the end, I forget what they were, the other little ones. Um, what were they? Let's see. Um, um, the collaboration with the Northampton Disability Commission. Oh, yeah. Ian, um, do we oh, have sure. anything? I'm sorry. I don't. Um, I'll, I will. After we get off the, the call now, I'll send them an email. Um, so okay. I, so lose it on my on my radar okay um let's see wait i'm looking and five what's minutes the, what's the other one um, um oh the elementary school okay so we were they were supposed to come back to us today we, we were talking about the playground surfaces we made a deal then i got an email from kathy shown about shane who said basically we're voting which was last friday on this, have you gotten any chance to discuss it? We really didn't get a chance to discuss it. She wasn't at our meeting. I guess they didn't communicate with her and they went and voted it anyway. So I don't know that we have anything to say about it. <laughs> and that's as far, Pamela, do you understand that differently or is Pamela not there? No, Pamela? I don't believe so. Is this about the, um about the uh, packet of information that had been sent to us very short notice or um no 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 but the elementary uh, the other thing that we did yeah that short notice thing apparently got canceled amherst college apparently decided they didn't want to pursue something they didn't even let us know 
So we didn't know what it was about, and we didn't know that they why they resolved it, but they don't want us involved, I guess. Um, okay, well, Myra, <laughs> I can give you a little oh, update okay. on that. Tom okay. Davies called me. Okay. <clears throat> um, the board had the same reservations I had about those stairs, that they were too narrow. Yep. So um, the architect was in town last week, and... Um, Tom Davies said they pulled it because they decided they're going to revisit it. And he thinks that they may be back um, in the future with some request for um, variance on it, but they're rethinking those two stairs. Fabulous. Yes. So, so, it's, I thought so, too. so they okay. actually do turn things down sometimes. Good to know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's sort of dicey. I I have to say I'm I didn't I didn't see this as our purview. Um because the width of the stair is not an issue um in the code, but evidently the board determined that it was in their purview. I would have thought the building inspector would have been the one who would have uh turn this down as a problem in the main code because winding stairs are not allowed in public buildings under well, the main code. So, so it's, perhaps, it's, a, it's a jurisdictional issue. Okay. So and so. and our building well building inspectors have allowed other things to go by that um we didn't think were such a good idea. And not ours only the state sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, okay. So we have okay. three sets of minutes, um, well, which Myra, I think. I, is, yeah. I, I did have a question about the elementary school. Uh, oh, yeah. I, okay. I, I, I missed the last part of the discussion because I had to be someplace else uh, when we talked about it back in November. And I wondered whether you, I, I'm sure you did cover emergency uh, exits uh, and how that would work. Um, and I just want, well, I'm I'm assuming that that happened because it's a multi-story building and it's not always easy to get people out of a multi-story building. You would be so. incorrect in assuming that we covered it. Okay. Because well, we didn't. Um, okay. we, we were trying to cover a lot of other things. We needed more time with them. We arranged for more time with them. And then we were told they were voting last Friday and that's pretty much that. So okay. I'm very confused because we were we invited them back and they agreed to come back. And then two days before, like last Wednesday, maybe I got this thing from Kathy Shane that said, we're voting on Friday. I hope you discuss the playground. And like we didn't get to the playground. You know, I had been asking her to bring us um, material for maybe since last spring, telling her that we needed to be involved. And they were, you know, they had their cons their accessibility consultants and everything was great. And we know that every time the accessibility consultants come to us, we somehow find things they didn't think about. Right. Um, so I, you know, I've been asking her for quite some time. Um, and then we got this big meeting, which she wasn't able to attend. And then we extended it to this month, and then they voted before we got to our next meeting, which was not a surprise meeting. It's a fixed date meeting. So I am very concerned about it, and I will write to her with your questions about egress and the playground because somehow I feel like they didn't want us particularly in the process to begin with until the very end, and then they didn't wait. And I understand why they didn't wait, because they're on a very strict timeline. But they should have said, we can't meet on December 12th. We need an emergency meeting. And we would have had one. So yeah. um, anyway, Marty, am I from the uh, from the uh, architect perspective? Am I uh, you want to throw th things at me for what I just said? <laughs> no, no, they needed to no. because we all know what happens. Yeah. We all know that we, as a group, I think as a group, we're very good at seeing things that other people don't think about. 
And I'm very sad that they went ahead. I'm going to write to her as soon as we're done. Now, apparently I have to write a letter about the, um, about what we discussed. So I guess what we discussed is that we're, um, you know, I mean, I think what's not to support about a project, but it doesn't seem like it has optimal accessibility unless the town through the van at the senior center yes. um, provides access to the parking lot. And because you know very well, Elise, that if you call the PVTA and you want to you want to be out there for two hours, you might be out there for three and a half. Yeah, no, it's just too much trouble. And and the way they have this the silver van now, they you have to like schedule something way in advance. So I they have to provide some other system so that people can have, I mean, it bugs the hell out of me that people keep using the word accessible and it's not, Yeah, you know? So, yeah. Well, it may be accessible, but it's not available. That's okay. Problem. That's a better way to put it. Um, because you not can, available. you will be able to get out of the parking lot. And get to the the path, and it'll be a three quarter mile, and you can go a mile and a half, go around it twice. Very nice, unencumbered. Um, however, if you can't get to the parking lot, that's the problem. Yeah, exactly. Right? And that's a programmatic problem that the town has to address. The PVTA will not address it, and the oh, paratransit is very hit and miss. You might want to go, and you might get exactly what you want. But you might end up sitting in the parking lot waiting for them for 45 minutes to I've, pick you up. I've experienced that. Yes, I yeah. have. I have had many dealings with them. I expect we've all sat and waited for PVTA vans, um, okay. you know, okay. waiting much longer than we wanted to. And if it's a hot day in the summer, you don't yeah. really want to sit there. So one thing we might want to suggest that there be a shelter in um off the parking lot for shade that somebody yeah. if they do want to wait for a van to pick them up that they're not sitting in the hot sun so that's one thing we could ask for or yeah yeah that's a good idea that's a good well, idea would it be worth it to to share the letter that we sent to um i can't remember what what committee it was at the state legislature legislature that was working on accessible paths um, but with this very, very concern uh, back in early October, I think, um, to share that with the town. You know, I didn't, um, I wasn't at the October meeting. So what did we do? Sorry, this was uh, the, uh, people from the committee on making paths more accessible. Yeah, <laughs> when that, they came like last summer, yeah, they came. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so they had a, they had a hearing in I think either late September, early October, and uh, I'd written a a letter on the behalf of the committee um, raising these concerns about being able to get to the trailheads. Can um, you share that with me? Yeah, yeah. Um, All right. Or do you want to take the responsibility of writing this letter to the town based on our conversation today? I mean, if you want to, yeah. you can use your letter. You can jump off of it. You can say that we really appreciate the, the work that the town is doing and that we're excited about the possibility of two accessible trails and about joining them eventually. Um, but here are our concerns, which are that there is no there is no availability of of um, of that. We're not the access isn't available to people who don't have cars. I mean, that's really the problem. And it's not a Conservation Commission problem. It's a town problem to solve, right? This is not a conservation commission problem. What they're doing is very cool, but they can't change the topography of East Pomeroy yes. Lane, of West Pomeroy Lane. They can't do that. If they can't put a sidewalk there, I understand that they can't put a sidewalk there, but they have to have some programmatic access to the trail or they're building something for a whole bunch of people that don't need it. Because they can go somewhere else with their car. Yep. 
Well, I think a letter is a good idea, but I, I also what I heard was was Dave saying that, yeah, he was going to take this this and other suggestions back to town hall and, and try to coordinate. So I think we need to hold his feet to the fire a little bit, uh, yep. you know, sometime in the new year about what he said. Which other suggestions are most poignant for you? For me? Yeah. Well, I mean, I I think the transportation is, mm -hmm. is, is the most important from my perspective. Uh, I think that the, the details of access, we provided good feedback today, um, but I would say that access for me is the most, you know, availability to use your term, Myra, is, is the most important issue for me. I, I don't, can't speak for anybody else, so. I, I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with okay. Jim wholeheartedly. So either you're going to write the letter, Ian, or you're going to send it to me and I'm going to write it. So um, whichever you choose. I, I, I can write it. I, I, okay. have, I have the, the letter that I wrote to the, the legislative committee already. Um, yeah. And I'll just adapt that. Okay. okay. Um, before you, uh, Pamela doesn't like it. If you send it to everybody, she wants you to send it to her and then she'll send it to all of us. Um, to make sure, uh, or you, she wasn't here, so she didn't hear most of it. Um, so if you want to send it, send it to her, or you can send it to me. You can't send it to a variety, to the, you can't deal with a quorum of the committee because then it's like violation of the open meeting law. So two of us, you, I'll, me, I'll and Marty, you. as Marty's the vice chair, the three of us could share it, but we cannot share it with more than three people, or it sounds like we're having a meeting. So we can't do that. So Got if it. you want to send it to me and Marty, we can send you feedback and then you can send it back from the DEAC and uh, send it to Pamela after we work on it. Is that all right, Marty? That's fine. Okay. Um, the minutes hey. came a long time ago. Did, does anybody, did anybody have any objections to any of the minutes? Because technically we have to have them. We have to put yeah. them online. Did anybody think of anything that we didn't send to Pamela? Like, I mean, her minutes are very good. There yeah. could be like misspellings and stuff. But other than that, did anybody have anything of substance about any of the minutes? No. I'm the minutes taker. Um, I'm not quite done with the November 14th minutes because um, I've been having some medical issues lately and Okay, sorry to hear that. Crest, uh, increased crest responsibilities, but I'm going to be trying to get them done along uh, minutes for this week, um, just by the end of the week. How about September and October? Uh, September and October should be all good. Okay, and what about the group? So um, I would like a motion about the September minutes. I motion to move the September minutes. Okay, thanks. We need a second. 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 Okay, Elise was first. <laughs> yeah, um, it's, I have to go. So I'm yeah. kind of. All right. So, all in favor of September minutes? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed to September minutes? Any abstentions? Okay, October minutes. I was not here, so I will abstain. I need a motion about October minutes. I'll I'll motion to uh, accept October minutes. Okay, second? A second. Okay, that's Marty? Yes. Okay, and um, so all in favor of approval of October minutes? Aye. 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 Okay, all opposed? Well, abstentions is me because I wasn't there. All right, I need a motion to adjourn and happy new year to everybody and happy holidays. And may everybody be in better shape than they're in right now. That's all I can say. Same to you. <laughs> Thank you. I move Thank that we you. adjourn. Okay. There's a motion to adjourn, and I think Jim seconded it. So we need a vote to adjourn. All in favor? Uh, aye. Yep. aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. All right. Happy, Happy New, New Year, year folks. Happy New See Year. you in January. It will be January 9th. Okay. Sounds good. All See right. you then. Great. Thank you, Stop. folks. Good. It's a great group. Thank you. Bye. See you next Bye. year. I can't see that.